This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. This review covers the M1A2 Abrams tank. It's a 135th scale kit from Trumpeter, number MM-00337. Now, the M1 Abrams was a third generation American battle tank designed by Chrysler Defense, and it was made for armored ground warfare. It's now one of the heaviest tanks in the service at 98 tons and has a top speed of 42 miles an hour. Now, it was introduced and featured innovative things like multi fuel turbine engine, uh, the sophisticated Cobham composite armor and a computer fire control system with a separate ammunition storage and blowout compartment. Later variants featured a 120 millimeter L44 barrel and gun. The M1 Abrams entered service in 1980 and currently serves as the main battle tank of the United States Army and formerly for the Marine Corps. It also has been exported to uh, allies and the M1A2 is still in service today. The Trumpeter kit was released in 2002 and it's had probably a dozen reboxings over the years. This kit that I'm building was the 2003 release and you can still find the kit online uh, in different versions with n different parts. Now it has approximately 328 pieces molded in dark yellow styrene, dark yellow poly, black vinyl, clear acetate and some mesh screen. When you're done, the kit features uh, a measurement of 12 and a half inches long by four inches wide and four inches tall. I would say it's for the uh, advanced to intermediate uh, range because of all the small parts. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, there's a lot of small pieces and some nice vinyl tracks there with decals and uh, some other parts. Um, because of all the small pieces, you'll have to be very careful with those uh, when you use a tweezer or something to pick them up. Uh, wrap a little piece of tape around the end or something to keep them to, uh, on the tweezers. Now, you'll be seeing some uh, products uh, that are featured here for uh, construction, so please review those uh, safety instructions for, from the manufacturer for any of those things uh, before you start building. Here are the decals for the kit. As you can see, they're pretty basic. Um, just some large um, you know, numerical detail. And then there's um, a graphic for the uh, gun barrel. Uh, but you may need some setting solution uh, for curves and things like that to get the decals to settle in. We'll begin construction with the um, road wheels and the sprockets. So uh, cut those off with a sprue cutter. And then um, use an X-Acto blade and some sanding sticks to get the, um, the sprue points off. Now glue the road wheels and sprockets together with some extra thin cement and set them aside to dry. Locate these pieces from the kit. The torsion arms, transmission plate, wheel and sprocket poly caps, the hole poly caps, the wheels and sprockets, the skirt brace idlers, the hole plug and the lower hole. And remove the seam lines and sprue tabs. And glue the torsion arms, the transmission plates, the hole poly caps, the upper idlers and the hole plug to the lower hole. And I'm going to glue the uh, skirt brace on when I glue the skirts into position. I'll hold off placing the wheels and sprockets until the tracks and some painting are done. So I decided to do step 5 next before I do the tracks. So clean up the suspension elements for the right side of the tank and place them on the lower hole in the same manner as step 2. Now we'll return to step 3 and grab the vinyl tracks, a candle, a lighter, and a small screwdriver. Now light the candle and loop the tracks back on itself and place the pins in the holes. Now heat the screwdriver over the candle and melt the pins onto the tracks and repeat that for the other track. Now these tracks look pretty nice for length uh, and the link tracks are more detailed and they're supposed to look better. After the tracks have dried, go ahead and clean those up of any flash etc. And then the two long lengths of track and a few two or three uh, link pieces of track and some single links will be used here and using some uh, quick setting cement uh, carefully glue the pieces of the track together around the wheels and sprocket leaving a part open uh, to remove the track for painting. Now I found the tracks a little bit short uh, for sag 
and the sag will not be seen under the skirts. Now that being said, the rubber tracks might be easier and still give enough detail. Now follow the same procedure to build the other set of tracks. At step 6, please uh, you can clean up the parts for the rear panel assembly. And I decided to add the auxiliary power unit too. So glue the power unit parts together and set it aside. Then glue the grating, the light, the hitch, and the other parts to the rear panel. And once the power unit is dry, attach it along with the brackets and glue it to the, uh, the light to the power unit. And you see here we've made some you know, adjustments to the instruction sequence and I think it makes things easier at times. So now you can go ahead and glue the completed rear panel to the lower hub tub. We'll work on the upper uh, hole now and uh, remove any imperfections and test fit and glue the parts for the front of the upper hole into place and I'm finding that the fit is pretty nice for the main uh, tanks parts and I decided to glue the um, uh, acetate windows in later on. Using a sprue cutter remove the rear upper hole parts trim and sand away the mold lines and any attachment points and then test fit it and glue the parts together to the upper hole. The fit is pretty nice and uh, it should be quite seamless. Now we'll work with the uh, skirting and the hole halves and I decided uh, not to glue the skirts to the hole until after painting the hole and the tracks. So first press the upper hole uh, onto the uh, poly parts in the front of the lower hole and then uh, glue the rear of the hole halves together. I glued the front of the hole to prevent later gaps and there's no reason to separate the hole halves anymore. Now remove any imperfections from the side skirt parts and assemble the skirt parts on a flat surface uh, with some thin cement. And then the skirts will be attached to the hole after the tracks are in place. And now for some old school craftsmanship, you'll need to stretch some sprue. I used a tea light candle to stretch it and the instructions call for three pieces 17.2 millimeters long with no mention of diameter but after some test fitting I found the stretched sprue pieces should be about a 1 16th inch in diameter by 11 16th inches long and you might need to stretch several pieces to get one that's just right. Now here's a good example of some of the parts that you need to make for this kit. Um, uh, you can see the um, uh, pieces here that are uh, grouped around the barrel and you could probably for these actually just use some evergreen 222 or some uh, rod stock uh, made from K&S brass. Uh, but uh, stretching sprue is uh, a, a nice way to uh, utilize all the pieces in the kit including the sprue. So then once you've got your rod stock cut or your uh, stretch sprue made, um, get the parts out for the machine gun. Remove the seam lines and the sprue attachment points and then test fit the parts and then use the uh, stretch sprue or uh, rod stock as we talked about and assemble the uh, parts together using some thin cement. And now here you see uh, that we'll be working on the upper turret using uh, also a 364 inch bit in, your, in a pin vise uh, to drill some holes. So we're going to grab the main gun barrel and the upper turret now and drill holes in the upper turret as per the instructions. Now the holes are kind of marked in the underside of the turret so you know where they are. And then glue the barrel halves together, sand away the seams and imperfections while keeping the barrel round. Now make sure uh, to glue the parts to the end of the barrel uh, to finish that up. At step 13 we're going to work on the turret assembly. So gather the upper and the lower turret halves, uh, the toolboxes, the periscope and the other accessories and clean those up. I found some sink marks on the uh, periscope parts. Uh, and the commander's hatch. So I used a little automotive uh, glazing putty to fill those holes and sanded them smooth. Then I uh, again refrained from putting the clear parts in until after the paint is on. With the uh, sink marks addressed uh, as we talked about we'll use uh, an array here of uh, tweezers. They have different tension levels uh, so it's pretty important to have the right one uh, for some of these very small parts. Now um, using some thin cement Go ahead and glue the turret halves together and it's a pretty nice fit. Step force, uh, 14 uh, consists of the left side of the turret and uh, we're going to, some of these parts are really small and I actually put them into little uh, paint cups um, so that they don't uh, go flying across the room or get lost until it's time to put them in place. 
You see the underside of the turret here and um, some of the detailing there. Now, uh, note that uh, we've been putting together the rest of the small pieces here. And you can find the instructions if you need, uh, you know, close up uh, and a ref refreshment that on that if, or if you don't have them. Uh, and you'll find that at the end of the review. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this over then and add uh, some of the gun parts and uh, turret parts uh, on top, the hatches, etc. And uh, set those aside to dry. Um, not a lot of parts, as many parts, on the right side of the turret assembly. And there's a few remaining parts for that. So remove uh, the imperfections, glue them to the turret. And I broke off one of the cable ends while sanding. And I glued it back on when attaching it uh, to the turret with some thin cement. Now we can assemble the bustle rack. And it uh, requires you to cut a piece of screening for the floor. There's a pattern in the instructions. And I just uh, took a copy of that cut out the template uh, and then used it to cut the screen. I then cleaned up the remainder of the parts and glued them together and I used some uh, super glue to glue in the screen. It looks like it was made out of fiberglass. Clean up these parts for the rear turret assembly and uh, they go on to the rear there of that turret and they'll hold the bustle rack and one of the antennas and they have some pretty nice attachment points and fit well. So we continue to add pieces to the tour. You can see some of the uh, boxes and uh, smoke dischargers here. Now I found that after you clean them up, uh, they all fit pretty well to their attachment points and uh, include those when you're putting them uh, together uh, before you paint so that they all get a uniform coat of uh, paint when you're doing that. So locate the parts uh, for the large antenna and clean that up. Um, and we're heading into a final turret assembly here. And then uh, glue that into place per the instructions. And I'll paint and attach the guns after most of the overall painting of the tank is finished. Now the thin antennas will be made but then attached at the end of assembly uh, because they're so easy to break. Now we have the tank room in here and the commander and the loader. And we're going to uh, assemble those uh, as a test fit actually. So we're going to... Um, remove the torso arms, goggles, and side arms for them and then test fit the commander in the hatch and then attach the arms to fit the tank uh, and then do the same for the loader. And after the arms have dried you can glue the uh, goggles and the side arms into place. Then I'll glue the figures back into place after they've been painted. Now we'll give all of the parts a uh, coat of primer. I use uh, Stenel Res uh, black primer as you can see here and let that dry. You can see that I'm, uh, I'm headed for desert um, scheme here and gave the uh, uh, tank a couple of coats of um, desert yellow. That's uh, Tamiya XF59. The uh, wheels get painted with that desert yellow uh, at the same time as the tank and then after uh, they've dried, uh, the wheels that is, um, the uh, rubber parts get painted with some uh, rubber black XF85. Use some of the Tamiya uh, brown panel line wash uh, and pin wash the panel lines and uh, painted some of that in random patterns on the flat surfaces. And I used some of the black panel line wash uh, for the screens and the grates. Then I took some mineral spirits and blended some of those panel lines uh, liners into the paint for kind of a dirty overall look to, to give it some uh, miles out in the out, out in the uh, you know the combat zone there. Now I painted the signal light chrome with a Molotow pen and after it dries uh, I painted that with some X27 clear red. After painting the tracks a dark metallic gray and letting them dry slide on the wheels and the sprockets and press on the poly hubs. Finally glue the tracks to the sprockets and the wheels and at this point the paint will have to be carefully removed to glue the pieces together. The tracks uh, are quite fragile when trying to place them back on the tank causing uh, re-gluing of some of the track pieces. Now using uh, some quick setting glue follow up with a set of stronger cement uh, might have been the problem or, or some of the tiny attachment points either way uh, You'll have to be patient and make a repair if there's a break. Well, uh, while the tracks are drying, we're going to cut some thin pieces pieces of the uh, stretched sprue. You see the three pieces there, the uh, um, half rounds. Or, or you can use uh, what you want to use of evergreen stock, etc. 
and glue the pieces on one side uh, of the signal light and then uh, and then drape it over the light and then glue successive pieces uh, over until you've got uh, you know uh, three of those in place over the light hold them into position uh, while they while they dry to keep them in place now it's time to glue the side skirts into place and uh, as we had uh, assembled those earlier on a flat surface I was worried about the fit but uh, they fit quite well and uh, you have to remember remove any paint before trying to glue them and then touch up the paint if needed after um, now I use some Temya uh, weathering master light sand uh, color uh, to dust up the screens uh, and um, the darker parts Next, I painted the uh, reflectors for the headlights and the taillights with uh, chrome pen. And um, then I painted the taillights with some X22 clear red and put a drop of pledge on the headlights uh, for a bit of gloss for that. After uh, brush painting the, the guns with some Tamiya gunmetal paint and then dry brushing them with a little flat aluminum and light sand, attach the uh, machine guns in front of the commander's position and the loader's hatch. And then uh, add some grime to the engine deck with a little of that uh, Tamiya Weathering Master soot um, that uh, you can buy on the internet. Well, let's get back to the uh, figures here, including what looks like uh, Lieutenant Dan, uh, the loader. And uh, we're going to prime those black and then uh, paint them with some dark yellow XF60 Tamiya paint. And then I painted the leather parts, including uh, the holster, a brown, and the gun grips, a gun metal. Now I dry brushed the headsets uh, wiring and the goggles with some flat black. And I also painted the loader's mask flat black. The uh, goggle lenses were uh, painted with a little gloss black. Now that the tank's properly weathered, place the turret on the hull and it goes on at a 90 degree angle and then twists to lock it in. I glued the figures and the antennas and I painted the antennas a metallic gray using some PVA glue and rubbing alcohol to break the surface tension. I dusted up the tracks uh, with some fine dirt uh, as well as some spots on the tank and, and the skirts too. Well, uh, I didn't use the rubber tracks and maybe that was a mistake but uh, that's what I had left over along with these few pieces and a piece of screening. Well next we'll place the decals using some warm water and some microset. Now there's some large number placards, uh, some small numbers front and back and some barrel art. And after the decals are set in position use a little microsol to soften them up and get them to conform. Finally I gave the uh, tank a coat of flat clear. Well there you have it. Your tank is finished and it looks great on the shelf. Um, it's a little extra work uh, as many of the military kits are of this scale because the parts are pretty small. Uh, but I found that the uh, link tracks were kind of uh, a problematic. The way they um, didn't quite fit and broke apart on me. I'm not sure they're worth the extra effort but nonetheless when you're done uh, it really looks good. and. I found some images online and this is kind of the uh, look that uh, some of the tanks had so I went with it. So if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well we hope you like this premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.